Okay, Adonai, everything. All right. So let's ask this question to ourselves: Is it Yahweh, the saving name of God, for eternity? No. But I did mention something. I did tell you one thing. I just uh, want to remind you again that I did say to you that Yahweh or Jehovah was the redemptive name of God in the Old Testament. All right, for the people of Israel. All right. But then the name Jesus is far greater and far superior than the name Yahweh or Jehovah, because the name Jesus is the only saving name under heaven given among men whereby every nation every man and woman for every people can be saved that's what exactly the bible said here you can turn the bible to expo 12 and uh, i'm just reminding you back again what we've learned uh in, uh, in, uh, in the previous class you can uh, go back to expo 12. neither is there salvation any other for there is not other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So according to this verse, there is only one name, under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So therefore here, Apostle Peter said, neither is there salvation any other. So that means there is no salvation in the name of Yahweh or Jehovah or Elohim or Allah. Okay? But there is a saving in the name of Jesus alone. For example, if you lay your hands on someone and pray in the name of Yahweh or Jehovah, that person will never be cured. That person will never receive that divine healing. But the person when you invoke only the name of Jesus, and when you lay your hands on that man and pray in the name of Jesus, that man will receive healing. All right? The divine healing will take place. So therefore, we can clearly see that Jesus is the name. Let us focus on Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9, 10, 11. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So according to this verse of scripture, the name Jesus is the name above all names. Okay? Given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, not at the name of Yahweh or Jehuar or Elohim, but at the name of Jesus. Right. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. The Bible does not say at the name of Yahweh or Jehuar or Adonai or Elohim or Elah or Elohim. But the Bible does say at the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That means in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, there is only one name that can save us, and that is the name Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Things that is in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Now you can see the supremacy of the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So therefore we can say, even though Yahweh and Yahweh or Jehovah, okay, was the redemptive name of for the people of Israel in the Old Testament, but that was not the real name of God, that was not eternally the saving name of God. So the only one saving name of God is Jesus, according to our Bible. Therefore the Bible said here, at, at the name of Jesus, everything is about things in heaven, and things in earth and things under the earth. All right? So this is what we need to understand. So we find that in the Old Testament, God progressively revealed more about himself as the various needs arose in the life of men. And he used names to express self-revelation. When Abraham needed a lamb to sacrifice, God revealed himself as Jehovah Zaire, or you can say Yahweh Zaire. So God revealed himself to Abraham that he is the Lord that provides. Amen. So Jehovah Zireh means what? It means that the Lord provides. Jehovah means Lord and Zireh means provides. So that means God revealed to Abraham and through, right, through Abraham and said, uh, 
himself has said one time, and it means the God that provides or the Lord that provides. When Israel, or yes, day before yesterday, I told you about how to pronounce in Hebrew Israel, all right? When the Israelites, the Israel, needed deliverance from their enemies, God revealed that his name, Yahweh or Jehovah, had previously, okay, all right, announced it with respect to deliverance and salvation. God revealed himself that he is the God who delivers. When the people of Israel need the okay, protection, God revealed himself as the Lord who protects. All right? So this is the reason when Israel people uh, needed protections from diseases and sicknesses, God revealed himself, the children of Israel, as Yahweh Rapha. Okay, you can say Jehua Rapha. Rapha means healer. All right? So when the children of Israel people receive the healing, all right, deliverance from sicknesses and from, uh, you know, uh, diseases, God revealed himself to the children of Israel that he is the God or the Lord that heals. All right? So God revealed himself as Jehua Rapha, the Lord that heals. When Israel needed victory over their enemies, God also again revealed himself as Jehua Nisi. The Lord is our victor. The Lord is our victory. Okay, but only the Lord can give you the provides. Only God can provide the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. The Lord can only provide that victory. So Jehovah is seeming the Lord is our victory. Or the Lord is our banner. So Jehovah is see means the Lord is our banner, or you can say the Lord is our victory. Names and the title describe about all Real important aspects about the nature of God. However, what we need to understand is none of them is the complete revelations of God's nature. Many people in the Old Testament realize this. Okay, they realize this. So they were, they were longing to know the name of God. Or in other words, they desire to know more about God, express their desire by asking to know his name. And let's read out what is there in Genesis 32. And verse 29. Alright, let's hear from my brother. I can read uh, Genesis uh, 32 and verse 29. All of you can turn back to the Genesis 32 verse 29. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. But God did not reveal his name. But what did God do? But God did bless Jacob and said, Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. You can say, or Israel. All right? This was the name given by God. Not only with uh, Jacob, but including Manoah who is known as the father of Samson, as the angels of the Lord, what is his name, was, and received this reply, including in the Judges chapter 13, verse 18. Let's turn back again to uh, the Old Testament. Judges chapter 13, verse 18. Let's hear from you. Judges chapter 13, verse 18. Judges chapter 13 verse 18 And the angel of the Lord said unto him Why ask thou thus after my name Seeing it is sacred Alright So why ask thou thus after my name Seeing it is a secret So God is saying to Manoah Who is the father of Samson And God said unto him My name is a sacred My name is a secret it's not a time for me to reveal it to you. But I also want you to understand, this was the manifestation. This was known as the manifestation of God. Angel of the Lord is not a real angel, but this was the Theophany. Theo means God, Phani means manifestation. This was the manifestation of God to Manuel. And, 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 and Manuel, 
asked the end of the Lord what his name was and he received this reply. The end of the Lord, which is the manifestation of God, said to Manua, my name is a secret. It's not a time, it's not a rightful time, it's not appropriate time to reveal it to you. So therefore, the end of the Lord said, Why ask thou thus after my name, seeing it a secret? Not only that, the prophet Agur asked about God, What is his name and what is his son's name, if thou can tell? According to Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4. He was looking to the future, trying to see by what name God would reveal himself when he would appear as a son. And we also know from the Old Testament, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 14 verse 9, also prophesied that a time would come when the Lord, who is the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, would be the king over all the earth. And in that day shall be one Lord, and his name shall be one. So Zechariah chapter 14 verse 9 said, let's turn the Bible back to Zechariah. Okay, let's turn to the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. And everybody underline Lord is the capitals. It's all in the capitals, right? L is the capital, O is the capital, R is the capital, D is the capital. What does it mean? It means that this is not an ordinary. Okay? Lord, but the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac himself. He's the one true God, the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, the God of the Old Testament. The one true God reveals and says through the prophet Zechariah, saying that in that day the Lord shall be one and his name shall be one. Alright? So from here we can also learn. That from the Old Testament, from all this thing we can learn from the Old Testament, the saints of God, the prophets, the people of God, the saints of God were longing, they were longing to know the same name of God because they know exactly that including Elohim, Yahweh, or Adonai is not the real saving name of God. Yahweh or Jehovah may be the redemptive name of God in the Old Testament for the people of Israel. However, even the people of Israel, including Moses, also notice that including Yahweh or Jehovah is not the real name of God. So they were including Moses, okay, the one who wrote the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Even he is asking God, tell me thy name. Now let's turn back again and to uh, the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 3. Let's uh, focus on verse 13. Let's read verse 13. Exodus chapter 3 verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall so say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Okay, so Moses is asking to God and say, When I come unto the children of Israel, and shall so say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God responded to Moses, uh, you know, uh, Moses, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am Ahizah. I am had sent me unto you. Now you can see here again, God is not revealing even to Moses because it was not at the appropriate time. Because the fullness of time was not yet culminated. The fullness of time was not yet started. And therefore, even 
to Moses, God was not revealing out his name. But thus, but God thus says, okay, through the prophet Isaiah, that the time would be coming when the fullness of the time would come, that God will definitely reveal his one saving name. His real name would be revealed in the future. So through the prophet Isaiah, God revealed it to us that he would definitely reveal his saving name when the time would come. All right, so let's uh, turn back again to Isaiah. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Isaiah 52 and verse 6. Let's read Isaiah 52 and verse 6. Isaiah 52 verse 6. Therefore my people shall know my name. Mm. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that do speak. Behold, it is I. Okay, everybody underline in verse 6. Therefore, my people shall know my name. So God is saying over here that when the fullness of time would come, God is saying that I will reveal my saving name to my people. So therefore, through the prophet Isaiah, God is saying here, my people shall know my name in that day therefore they shall know in that day is a future tense in that day that i am he that do speak it behold it is i so god made a promise over here in the old testament god made a promise to the people of israel that when the fullness of the time would come god is saying that i will reveal my name all right, therefore he said, I will reveal it to my people. Therefore, my people shall know my name. That means the world will not know, but yes, the people of God will know. There's this difference between the world and my people. So God is saying here, specifically, God says here, only my people shall know my name. Amen. So who are the people of God? The people who believe in him. The Christians, the believers, the people who believe in the Bible. The Bible believing people, all right, God fearing men and women, they would know the saving name of God. So therefore here God made a promise to the people of Israel that definitely he would reveal his name when the fullness of the time would come. So the interesting thing is, when the fullness of the time came, God indeed satisfied the longing of his people and revealed himself in all his power and glory through the name Jesus. All right, let's turn the Bible to uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. It says, She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And we also know that Jesus, the Greek equivalent of a Hebrew name, very surrendered as Joshua. Or Jehoshua, or Joshua, or Joshua. And according to Hebrew 4 8 and Acts chapter 7, verse 45, so that Jesus is the same as Joshua. Alright, it's a very interesting thing for every one of you to know this. The name Jesus means, okay, Jesus means Jehua or Zahweh is my savior. Jesus means Yahweh or Jehovah is my salvation. All right? Please understand that. And many people, you know, say that Jesus means only Savior. No. There is only half truth, not full truth. If you, okay, study from the Bible, that it is absolutely clear Jesus means. Jehua Savior, or we can say Jehua our salvation. Okay, that's what it means. Or Jehua is salvation. That's the meaning of Jesus. Jesus means Jehua is Savior, or Jehua is my salvation, or we can say Yahweh is my Savior. That is the meaning of the name Jesus. And therefore, 
according to Matthew chapter 1 verse 31 said, Since we bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. It is very interesting that the identification of the name Jesus, which salvation is particularly evident, because the Hebrew for Joshua is a practically identical to the Hebrew for salvation, especially in the ancient Hebrew, did not use the written vowel. In fact, according to the strong concordance, translates Joshua as Jehoshua, a Hebrew word for salvation as Joshua. Although others have borne the name Jehu, uh, Je, uh, Je, Jehoshua or Joshua or Joshua, the Lord Jesus Christ, the only one who actually live up to that name, he is the one who is actually what the name describes. And it's a very important for all of, all of us to know that Jesus, okay, let me put it this way, the name Jesus is the culmination of all the Old Testament names of God. The most superior and the name Jesus is the culmination of all the Old Testament names of God. Indeed, it is the highest, most exalted name ever revealed to the mankind. That is written by Philippians chapter 2. Apostle Paul said, What? Well, at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. In three categories heaven, earth, under the earth. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. So, what does it tell you? It means that Jesus is. The culmination of all the Old Testament names of God. Alright? And indeed it is the highest name and is the most exalted name ever that revealed to the mankind. So therefore the name of Jesus is the name of God that he promised to reveal when he said, therefore, my people shall know my name. Amen. Hallelujah. And I know that there are some denominations churches around the world who claim to be Christians, but they don't, they don't believe that the saving name of God is Jesus. They don't believe that the name of God is Jesus. And if you have this kind of a confused mind, then you can be easily trapped and there were many people here who have been trapped and they've been trapped into these false doctrines and they even joined the false okay, denominations and so-called Christian sources. For example, the Jehovah Witness. On the other, they claim to be Christian, but yet, okay, what they teach and preach is absolutely, okay, hereticals. And because they deny the deity of Christ, and they also deny that the name of God is Jesus. Because they are saying that the name of God is Jehovah. What a funny, it's really funny, right? Okay, let's put it in a very simple way. If the name of God is Jehovah, then I challenge you to lay your hands on the sick people <coughs> and orally invoke from your mouth and cry out and say, in the name of Jehovah, be healed. I challenge you, you can pray for 10,000 years, but that very man will never be healed. Okay, you say, in the name of Jehovah, let the people receive the healing in, in the name of Jehovah. I challenge you to do that. Pray for the, another one for 10,000 years. God will not answer your prayer. Nothing will happen. Why? Because you are disobeying the word of God. Because the Bible says, Whatsoever you do in word and in deeds, do all, not in the name of Jehovah or Yahweh or Elohim, but do all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. Even Jesus Christ says, In my name, he does not say in the name of Jehovah or in the name of Yahweh. He said, in my name you shall cast out the demons. Let's turn the Bible to Mark chapter 16. 
Look at here in uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. What did Jesus say? In my name, not in the name of Jehovah or Zahweh. You said, in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with a new tongue. So here Jesus said, in my name, Amen. you can cast out the devils. Not in the name of Jehovah, not in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, but in the name of Jesus, you can cast out the demons. Signs and wonders will be performed. Signs and wonders will happen if you obey the Lord. Amen. And if you obey the word of God and do all things in the name of Jesus, then you will see the glory of God. Amen. You will see that God will perform the work and the people will receive, amen, the deliverance and people will receive the healing only in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Therefore, my friend, understand. Therefore, we are saying that Jesus, it is the, the name Jesus is the, is the highest name and the, indeed the most exalted name ever revealed to the mankind. That is the reason why. Okay, the name of Jesus is the name of God that God promised to reveal when he said in Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 6 where he said, Therefore, my people shall know my name. So what is his name? Amen. According to the Bible, the name of God is Jesus. Amen. Therefore, Apostle Paul tells us in the Colossians chapter 3 verse 17, Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's also turn the Bible here to the uh, Acts chapter 3. Let us see some examples. How did the early church, the apostles, cast out the demons and uh, perform the signs and wonders? Let us see here in the Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Then Peter and, uh, said, silver and gold have I none. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And let's see what happened. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately, you can see in verse 7, the Bible says, immediately. His feet and ankle bone received strength, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see that? So here you can see this man is walking and leaping and praising God. Because instantly, Amen. This man was healed, amen, in the name of Jesus. Because here, Peter was invoking orally the name of God, the Father, the name of God, the Son, and the name of God, the Holy Spirit, amen. Because the name of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. And the name Jesus is the most, hallelujah, amen. exalted name ever revealed to mankind. Therefore, I understand, Apostle Paul said, At the name of Jesus, every knee is to bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Jesus, the name Jesus, is the one name of Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9, that encompasses and includes all the other names of God within its meaning. Therefore, I understand, brothers and sisters, the early church, the New Testament church, you can say, apostolic church, you can say the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church of Christ, the New Testament church were identified by the name of Jesus, not by the name of Zawi or Jehovah. Amen. Let's turn the Bible and let's take it out. Okay, look at here in Matthew chapter 10 verse 22. According to the Bible, 
Amen? The New Testament church, I'm not talking about any denomination churches of today. I'm talking about the Bible, the New Testament church, the early church. According to the Bible, the early church, the New Testament church, is identified by the name of Jesus alone. How do we know? Let's read out from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 22. Let's read out Matthew, chapter 10, verse 22. Amen. Let's hear from our uh, sister Kakili do the reading. Matthew 10, 22. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily it seems to you, ye shall not have gone. Yes, Matthew chapter uh, 10, verse 22. And ye shall be headed of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Amen. So Jesus said, Ye shall be headed of all men for my name's sake. Amen. So therefore, we can clearly see here, according to this verse, that the New Testament church was identified by the name of Jesus. In other words, the early church was persecuted for the name of Jesus. Amen. The early church was not persecuted in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The early church was not persecuted in the name of Yahweh, Elohim, or Eloah. Amen. The early church, the New Testament church, was persecuted because of the name of Jesus. Because they were teaching and preaching only in the name of Jesus. Let's turn the Bible and check it out. All right? Let's turn the Bible to Matthew, uh, so uh, Acts chapter 5. Let's read out Acts chapter 5 and verse 28. Let us see what, what does the Bible say here. Acts chapter 5 verse 28. Yes, you can read out. Acts chapter 5 verse 28. Saying, did not we expressly command you that ye should not teach in his name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intended to bring his men's blood upon us. Amen. So therefore you can see the stripes and the rabbis. The Jewish rabbis, the Jewish teachers, the teachers of the law, the scribes and the priests of the Old Testament's law, they were okay, scared of the name of Jesus. They threatened the apostles not to use the name of Jesus, not to pray in the name of Jesus, not to teach in the name of Jesus, and not to say anything in the name of Jesus. They were born into uh, Acts of the 5 verse 28. They said in their Bible said very clearly, did not be straightly commanded you that you should not teach in this name. Why? Why they why they treat in the apostles not to use the name of Jesus? Because there is a power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is the name of God. Therefore, the Satan is scared. The devil is trembling. The Satan is trembling. is scared because Jesus is the name of God. Therefore, the scribes and the rabbis, the people of Israel, their leaders, their rabbis and their teachers of the law, they were trained the name and they warned the apostles not to use the name Jesus. Never again see here. Verse 28. Did we not really command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Okay? Look at here again in verse 40. Let's continue reading. According to Acts of the 5, verse 40. All this says, to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles, beaten them up, that means the apostles were beaten, thrown in the prisons, they've been persecuted, beaten up, and they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So the scribes and the rabbis, okay, they're too scared of the name of Jesus Christ. They beat the apostles, they treated them, and they said unto the apostles, all right, do not use the name Jesus anymore. Stop teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus. That they should not speak the name of Jesus, let them go. 
the apostles they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer same for his name according to verse 42 in acts 5 verse 42 says daily in the temple daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach jesus christ amen they were not teaching preaching in Jehovah's name. They were not even preaching in the name of Yahweh. But they were teaching and preaching only in the name of Jesus Christ. They've been beaten up. They've been put into prison. They've been uh, tortured. They've been persecuted. Despite all that, they did not cease to teach and preach in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see that? You can see here. Verse 42, daily in the temple. And in every house, wherever they, they, uh, you know, they visited, in every house, they continue to teach and preach only in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's also turn to uh, Acts of the 4. You can see one more. According to Acts of the 4 and verse 17 to 20, let's read uh, out. Okay, someone read loud, please. Acts of the 4, verse 17 to 20. Acts chapter 4 verse 17 to 20 But that it spread no further among the people Let us freely threaten them That they speak henceforth No man in this name 18 And they called them and commanded them Not to speak at all Not teach in the name of Jesus But Peter and John answered and said unto them Whether it be right in the sight of God To hearken unto you More than unto God Judge ye For we cannot but speak the things Which we have seen and heard Amen. Hallelujah. You can see that? Over there, according to Acts 4, they were treated. They've been warned not to teach and preach in the name of Jesus. The reason is because there is a power in the name of Jesus. Because if the early church would stop preaching and teaching in Jesus' name, they would have no power. Alright? They would not be able to do anything. Because once you stop using the name of Jesus Christ and once you stop preaching and teaching in the name of God Jesus you have nothing you are powerless you would become nothing you cannot do anything that's the reason why the Satan is scared and is very much trembling at the name of Jesus there's the reason why the chief councils the scribes and the rabbis all the apostles, they treated them, they warned them, and they told them that stop teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus, and we will let you go. We will give you, uh, we will, you know, release you. But the apostles said, we cannot stop teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And they continue teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus. And you can want to see one more from the Acts chapter 15, verse 26. Let's read out. From the Acts chapter 15, verse 26. Acts chapter 15, verse 26. Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What it says? The apostles were known as men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not in the name of Yahweh or Jehovah, but in the name of Jesus Christ. They have risked their lives. Amen. They have laid down their life for the name of Jesus Christ. They put their life in this kind of, in a risk. Because they've been tortured, they've been persecuted in the name of Jesus Christ. Still, the apostle, the early church, consider it, it is a privilege. But the apostles considered it a privilege to be counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Bible said they came out from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted, uh, they were, you know, counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. Peter said that the land man at the gate beautiful was healed by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Not by the name of Jehovah, not by the name of Yahweh, not by the name of Elohim or Eloah, but by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Not by the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As I told you in my previous class, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is indeed the titles of God, not the saving name. Amen. Hallelujah. And nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Bible says, whatsoever you do, in word or in deed, do in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Then why are our priests, our pastors, our Bible teachers refuse to do all things in the name of Jesus Christ? If you are the Bible believing people, because many people claim that they are Bible church, they are Bible believing people, etc. etc. Very good. If you are Bible believing people, if you are Bible believing church, we love you, we respect you, you have our respect. But the point here is, my friend, if you truly claim that you are Bible believing people, then why are you refusing? To do all things in the name of Jesus Christ, including the water baptism in Jesus' name. Including the holy matrimony. When the priest, a pastor, will solemnize the people, instead of uniting them in the name of Jesus, they will say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. So me one Bible verse in the entire Holy Scripture. In the entire Holy Bible, only one scripture where the scripture stated and say that whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So me one Bible verse. Then why are you uniting, solemnizing the couple in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Even when the priest, the pastors, is okay, burying the dead. They would not do it in Jesus' name. They would say the Father's and Holy Spirit again. Even to the extent of, all right, church dedication. For example, when we are dedicating our church building, a new church building, you will come across hardly the Christian leaders and pastors would dedicate the church, which Jesus said it's my church, amen. Because Jesus called the church my church, amen. And the doctor said, this is our church. He said, it's my church because it belongs to me. Amen? Amen. You understand that? If I said, it's my wife, that means no one except me have the authority over this woman. Amen? And therefore, I can rightly say to my wife, she's my wife. Amen? Because she belongs to me. And if I say, our wife, that means we are sharing. One Tibetan woman in the news, it's very, very strange that she married three men and uh, three men were sharing one woman. <laughs> According to the news, uh, I was really shocked to come across that news. So for them, they have to say, she is our wife, they have to say that. Because she's married to a three different person. So they're sharing that woman. But anyway, but if you are married to one husband, or if you're married to one wife, then you say, my husband. He is my husband, because if only you have your authority over your husband. Amen? Not the other lady have authority and power. Only you have the power. For example, Sister Zita, over your husband, only you have the authority. Only you have the power. Amen? Not any other woman. The other woman may be very beautiful, even her past girlfriends, they don't have any power and authority because they're not married to her. Because they're not married to your husband. Therefore, only you have the power and the authority over your husband, not his, okay, ex and uh, you know, ex-girlfriends. That is the reason why Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 18, my church, hallelujah. But despite that, the problem is that many Christian leaders and pastors, when it comes to dedicating a new church building, instead of dedicating that church building in the name of Jesus, they would say, I dedicate this building in the Father and the Son. Oh, wait a minute, what are you doing? Wait a minute, what are you doing? Show me one scripture. I challenge you, 
And these are very gentle. Okay, remind, 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 and I'm reminding you, graciously and gently, show me one reference where the Holy Scripture says, do all things in the Father's and all the Spirit. We are not against any denominations. We are simply Christians. We are simply Bible-believing people. But the questions over here is, when it comes to dedicating the church building, why are you dedicating in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the titles of God? And why are you not dedicating in the name of God? Because the church belongs to the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Be it the visible church or invisible church, it belongs to Him alone. Amen. Today, if we have a church building over here, the church building does not belong to me, it belongs to Him. I'm not the head of the church because the head of the church is Jesus. We are only servants. Pastors are servants. We are only overseers. But the one who has the authority and the power over the church is Jesus Christ alone. And many people say our headquarters. You know, your headquarters is not based in the United States of America. It's not based in New York. It's not based in Beijing or New Delhi. It is Jesus Christ. Amen. Because Jesus is the head. Of the church. Praise the name of God. Amen. Amen. So if you say headquarters, that is Jesus Christ. If you have a headquarters from the uh, United States of America, that is not a true church. That is a holy church, man made church. Praise the name of God. You have to understand the head is always Jesus Christ, not councils, not you know some. Okay, executive members, the governing body is not the headquarter. Jesus Christ, the headquarter. Amen. So what, what really wonders me is that many priests, many pastors, they're so reluctant to use the name Jesus, even while they becoming, when it comes to dedicating the church building. They will not say the name of Jesus, but rather they would say, I, uh, you know, dedicated this church in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I can understand, okay, if you are not a Bible student, if I can understand if you're not a Bible believing people, then it's okay, I can understand. But what really wonders me, what, what really puzzles me is that, because these are the people who claim every night and every day, every morning and evening, these are the people who are claiming that they are the Bible believing church. These are the people who consider themselves, they are the true Bible-believing preacher. They often claim that their seminary is also Bible curriculum. It's Bible-centered, Christ-centered, Bible-centered. They are biblical church, Bible-believing church, God-fearing church. What really wonders me is that because when you claim all these things, why are you not doing things rightly according to the Bible? Amen. Because nowhere in the Bible said do all things in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It says do all things in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the name above all names. Because in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth. Praise the Lord. You see that? And sometimes it really wonders me. But some people have no problem praying, praying signs and wonders. Pray in Jesus' name, but they do have a problem when it, only when it comes to baptism. When it comes to baptism, they would never use the name Jesus. They would say again, I baptize the sister Kakili in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Some priests even practice infant baptism. In one YouTube I came across, that priest, I don't know which church, Submerge that infant maybe three times. Okay. In the name of the Father, baby, he was crying. In the name of the Son, baby, he was crying. In the name of the Holy Spirit, baby, he was crying. Oh, come on. I feel pity for that baby anyway. But the funny thing is that it is infant baptism because infant baptism is nowhere practiced in the New Testament. Amen. A person who's going to be baptized must be a believer. Amen. The Bible says they believe and baptize. Infant cannot believe. Amen. And according to Acts 2, verse 9, it said, Repent, change your mind. Hallelujah. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. 
And we all know that infants cannot repent. Amen. On the top of that, he's submersing that infant baby three times into the water. And every time that that baby was submerged into that water, the baby was crying out. All right? And the very funny thing is that nowhere in the whole Bible, nowhere in the whole Bible, from the Genesis to all the way to the book of Revelation, nobody was baptized in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen? Not even a single person is baptized in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Every one of them, every man and woman, every nation were all baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. According to my Bible and according to your Bible. Even if you don't agree, if you don't use a KJV, no problem. Even if you read from Good News Bible, NIV, no matter which version that you're using, okay, check it out. That any, no matter what version that you would prefer to use it, okay, you can use any version. You can even study from Greek and Hebrew Bible. You can study from any, 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 okay, versions of the Bible. Check it out. There is no, not even a single one is baptized in the Father and Holy Spirit according to the Bible and according to the church history. Every man and woman in the church history, every man and woman in the Holy Bible, amen, under the New Testament, all right, from the AD 30 to 180, of oh, during that period, every one of them, Every believers were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ only for the remission of their sins. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the reason, my friend, sometimes it really wonders me. I can understand if you're not Bible believing people, if you're just denomination Christians, okay? That means since you don't consider the Bible as authoritative, that means we can understand, okay? These people do whatever they want to do, they, they prefer the traditions over the Bible so we can understand but what we cannot understand is this the so-called Bible believing churches so-called Bible believing people okay not doing according to what the Bible says because according to the New Testament the Bible we are baptism is only in the name of Jesus Christ amen hallelujah so this is what we need to understand therefore my friend according to the Holy Scripture it's very very clear that Jesus Christ is a name above all names. And therefore, the New Testament church, the early church, were identified not by the name of Yahweh or Elohim or Eloah or the Father, Son, or the Spirit. The New Testament church were identified by the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Because they gathered together in Jesus' name. Even when they come together in. Amen. When they, you know, when they assembled. When they come together, when they come together to worship God, they do in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus said, if one or two are gathered in my name, the New Testament church were baptized in Jesus' name from the day of Pentecost. You can see, hallelujah, the early church were baptized only in Jesus' name. They teach and preach in Jesus' name. They cast out demons in Jesus' name. They pray in Jesus' name. And they were persecuted in the name of Jesus' name. And they do all things in Jesus' name, according to the Bible. Therefore, we are saying the New Testament church, the early church, is identified by the name of Jesus only. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Not in any other name. Because they never practice. They never prayed in the name of Yahweh or Jehovah or Elohim or the Father, Son, or the Spirit. They always do and pray only in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is clear according to the Holy Bible that the early church, the New Testament church, is only identified by the name of Jesus. And therefore, we can see that Apostle Peter said in Acts chapter 4 verse 12, Neither is there salvation any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And it continues. The Apostle Paul wrote, According to Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, Wherefore God also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Because of this exalted position of this name, we are exhorted. Remember, we are using the word exhorted. We are exhorted. 
to rely upon the name of Jesus in all we do or say. Let's turn the Bible and read out together. Somebody may even uh, you know doubt us because sometimes what happens is that some people does not even come across this Colossians chapter verse 17. All right, let's read out together Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. Okay, you guys can read together Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. Amen. Can you start reading? One, two, three. And, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what does the Bible say there? The Bible said, whatsoever you do in word or in deed. Amen. That means, hallelujah, amen. No matter what you say and no matter what you do, amen, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what they do. They were the only just pray in Jesus' name. They cast out demons in Jesus' name. They teach and preach in the name of Jesus. They cast out devils in Jesus' name. They speak in tongues in the name of Jesus. They receive the supernatural power in Jesus' name. They pray for the sick in Jesus' name. In short, they were doing all things in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now show me some in any scripture where the apostle prayed for the sick in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Show me one Bible verse where the early church cast out the demons in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Show me one Bible verse where the New Testament church were practicing the baptism in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. According to the Bible, it's only Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. They do all things in the name of Jesus. Christ only. So therefore the apostles, the apostolic church, the New Testament church, they cast a devil in Jesus' name, speak in tongues in Jesus' name, they receive the supernatural power in Jesus' name, they receive the supernatural power and protection in Jesus' name, they pray in the name of Jesus, even for the sick, they do all things in the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders are done by the name of Jesus, apostles pray and make requests known to God in the name of Jesus. The New Testament church gather together in the name of Jesus. And they do all things including the water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I want to check it out. There's Matthew chapter 18 verse 20. What does it say there? That Jesus said, if water to earth gather in my name, I shall be in your midst. Which means... The New Testament church gather together only in the name of Jesus. Let's turn the Bible and read out Matthew 18 verse 20. Matthew chapter 18 verse 20. What does it say there? Twenty. Yes, read now. Yes, read now. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there. Am I in the way of death? Amen. So God, Jesus saying, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So from here we can learn that the New Testament church gathered together in the name of Jesus and they baptized in the name of Jesus. So therefore when you survey the entire okay, the book of Acts, you will come across that every nation, not just the Jewish people, Amen? Including the Samaritans, including the Gentiles, everyone were baptized only in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay, therefore, my friends, I want you to turn the Bible again to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Let's survey very quickly. Let's remind once again the baptism of formula that the early church practice only in the name of Jesus Christ. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 3,000 souls were added. 3,000 people obeyed, hallelujah, the commandments of the Lord, and they were baptized all in the name of Jesus. According to Acts chapter 8, verse 16, Samaritan, all right, Acts 16 say, Even they were baptized in the name of Jesus. 
the Gentiles. Acts chapter 10. All right, verse 48. That Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 10, verse 48. All right? Including in uh, re baptism. Okay, even to the extent of re baptism, Acts chapter 19. Look at here, Acts chapter 19, verse 2 to 5. I think let's read out this portion. Uh, Acts chapter 19, verse 2 to 5. Can we read loud? Somebody would do the reading for us. Specifically, we do the reading from the Bible. Acts chapter 19, verse 2 to 5. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since he believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what did Mary baptize? And they said unto John, Baptism. Then said Paul, John, Mary baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they shall believe on him which shall come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. You can see that even with external baptism, the early church and you have to practice the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the his disciples. Amen. It was not the name Father, Father, but the name Jesus Christ. And though the name of the Father, therefore, is Jesus, we know the name of the Son is Jesus, the name of the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. Therefore, as the children of God, we need to remind ourselves once again that Jesus, hallelujah, our holiest name, the most beautiful name, the name that is above all, and above all, and the name, all right, that God reveals under this heaven for you and I, for our salvation, the name that is given for our salvation is only the name of Jesus Christ, not the name Yahweh. Not the name Jehovah, not the name Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but Jesus. Amen. All right, this is something that I want to quickly, uh, you know, summarize it so that you all can understand, prepare it for your tomorrow's tomorrow exam. And uh, now let's cut short and let me give you a tips a little bit for your tomorrow's examinations. All right, uh, definitely will be uh, cooperating. From the verse uh, page number one, and uh, we'll come to the page number twenty-eight. All right. The second section, uh, the fifth section, which is the, the doctrines of Trinity, three persons or just one God. This section will be covered up in the next class, which means on Monday onward. All right, from Tuesday, uh, this portion will be covered up. Uh, this will be a over uh, from this coming uh, Tuesday, but what we're going to do the test for the first test will be over from the uh, page one to this page number twenty-eight. So I request all of you to prepare for this first test, which will help tomorrow exam at this time. Amen. So God bless you guys, and I just want to give you more time for you to prepare it thoroughly, so that you have time to write your exam and prepare for your examination. God bless you. Thank you. We'll stop right here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let us uh, sing one chorus and praise the Lord together. Amen.